Welcome to the Envelopes Emmy Contender Series. I'm Yvonne Villarreal. Each episode, we'll talk with the actors behind some of your favorite TV performances this season. On today's episode, we're talking to Katrina Balfe, who plays Claire Randall in the TV series Outlander. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We just had your co-star, Sam. I don't want to talk about him. Well, he told us that there's this <laughs> riff going on, that we have to keep you guys no, apart. you should ask him what he's done. <laughs> Because, you know, he knows. He, he knows, knows what he's done. Yeah. you setting him straight? Well, he just needs to be told a lesson or two. You know, mm -hmm. it's like when he, when he, uh, he just, yeah, he decided to, uh, he took all of my, um, we were given gifts. There was gifts sent to set. He took them all. <laughs> and then he has spread a rumor that he makes homemade fudge when actually... <laughs> It was uh, the lovely lady at a set who gave us both homemade fudge, and he took credit for that. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, he just, he's on ice for a little minute. All right. Yeah, he told <laughs> us you guys have to CGI your scenes now. Yeah. Which is, you know. Well, you know, I, I now act to, to a post-it, which, <laughs> you know, some days it's the same thing. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, you know, fans, like, this was, like, one of our most asked questions of why you guys are not doing this interview together. Um, how has like how have you settled into the fandom of Outlander three seasons and in, going into your fourth? Um, you they're know, very they're committed. Great. They're yeah. great. I, look, we're so lucky. We have this this amazing fan base who are so committed and they're so passionate about the show and the books and um, you know especially when there's a, an adaptation that happens. Mm -hmm it's not always that people get on board with the new version of it, yeah. right? And um, we've been really lucky that the fans of the books predominantly have transferred their love over to the show. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they're, you know, they, they support, like Sam and I, we both um, work with charities and they're so supportive mm -hmm. of that. And all of that stuff is just amazing. And, you know, as with anything, there's a point zero zero one percent who want to just <laughs> ruin it for everybody <laughs> but you know we just let them do their thing yeah. and ignore it yeah well uh season three um we see that jamie and claire are spending much of it apart at least for the first half of the season um and it really gave your characters a chance to explore a life that's sort of compromised this isn't happily ever after it's we're just going with what we can right now um talk about sort of living that life of of it not being the ideal situation but going through with it anyway yeah you know for Claire um, in the beginning of season three where we pick up is she's just arrived back through the stones um, we sort of pick up when her and Frank arrive in Boston she's pregnant with Jamie's child and for all intents and purposes she is a woman going through grief mm -hmm. because she thinks that Jamie has died yeah. at Culloden um, and living with the memory of someone who's dead is very different than living with the memory or living with the notion that mm -hmm. the person that you want to be with is somewhere else mm -hmm. and living at the same time. So, you know, it, it was interesting to sort of work with that and, and how does grief, how, how do you go through the stages of grief while at the same time having to, um, on the surface, mm -hmm get on board with this rekindling of a marriage mm -hmm. in some ways. And, and for me, you know, the fact that Claire was pregnant and that she had this um, child that she was about to bring into the world, she had to make a success of her situation. And Frank at this point, you know, everything he has done has been honorable up to this mm -hmm. point. He, he has accepted her back. He has listened to her version of what has happened and he may not like it or believe it but he accepts it from her mm -hmm. but he asks that she put everything that happened to one side and never speak about it again and so that's that's quite a, a difficult thing for Claire to do but in many ways that's how she copes with it mm -hmm. she has to just put that whole part of herself to one side um, but you know it, it was really interesting and it was a really great challenge to go through the different phases of her life we had three episodes to kind of span mm -hmm. 20 years which is not a lot yeah. um, so you're trying to find a way to make that a, a fully formed story within these little vignettes or, or whatever you get to to play it and you know Tobias and I talked a lot about not making Claire and Frank just one note that mm -hmm. this is a terrible relationship and you know because otherwise that's 
I don't think, you know, I think both of those characters are, are better than that to stay in something if it was just terrible. And so we worked with trying to find, well, where's the moments that they coexist in a, in a, in a cohesive way and what works in that relationship and what, um, where, do, where, does the, where does the light shine? And it's Brianna, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, but it's also, you know, it's, it's, her, it's her trying to find the good in her life and trying to make it successful even though she has lost something that's that's so huge for her. Was there anything from the books that didn't make it in that sort of helped you understand or get to know her in this 20 year period? Of course, I mean there's some scenes that I was like devastated we didn't get to shoot. There's the scene where she's working all day and Brianna gets hurt mm -hmm. and she has to run home and, and it, she has all of that guilt mm -hmm. and all of that, um, you know, she, it's 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 so interesting to see a working mom in that kind of late 50s early mm -hmm. 60s time and I was like what do you mean we're not filming that <laughs> that's that's so important to this character um, but you know time in, in you know we don't have time to shoot everything mm -hmm. but it, but I have that you know and you bring that into your performance um, throughout the rest of the scenes um, but you know it, it was also having all of that stuff especially when we got to episode like three four and five you want to you want to show that the character is wearing all of mm -hmm. those experiences and um you know that that having lived 20 years without having passion mm -hmm. without having intimacy um those things even though she managed to be successful professionally and as a mother it it it's it changes who you are um and i you know, I, I wanted to show Claire that's more reserved and more, you know, that she sort of lost that spark and that freedom and that feistiness that we know of her from before. Um, and then when, you know, she's reunited with Jamie and going forward, you want to sort of bring that back right. in. What, um, we see that, you know, she, she, uh, gets into medicine as sort of her way to function through all of this. Like, I need something to grasp to, mm -hmm. grasp on. Um, what was it like sort of watching her come into that? And, you know, you talked about being a mother in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Just being a woman in general during that time, we see what she faces in terms of that. Like, talk a little bit about being in that mindset. Yeah, you know, it's it's... We're at such a time right now when we're still battling for equality and we're still battling for um, respect as as women. But looking back at that time and you see how just how people would shut any woman down with an opinion or you know that we had that great scene in the university with Frank and you know Claire is supposed to play this doting wife role and you know, God forbid that she might have an opinion about politics or anything like that, or that she might even read a newspaper, you know. Um, and it's, it's interesting because obviously, you know, you look at, or I look at my mother and my grandmother and you just, you start thinking about all of the things that have, that they've gone mm -hmm. through in their lives or, and, and it makes you understand more how, you know, how they've become the women that they are and, and the things that they've had to go through. And, you know, it was important for me that Claire, I've always said that she's timeless, right? And that even when she was back in the 18th century, that, you know, that no matter where she would be, she would always speak up and she would always try and find a way to be in her authentic self. And so it was nice to have bring her back into her future, mm -hmm. you know, or her present. And... And watch that she's still that you know it's pushing not against it, it. Yeah, that she's still pushing against it, and it's not that she was just a woman from the 40s back in the 18th mm -hmm. century, mm -hmm. and that's why she was able to speak up. No, because she's experiencing very similar things in that time too. So that it's that this is just her character that no matter when you put her in or what time you put her in, um, that she will always try and buck that patriarchy, and she will always try and. Um, yeah, like fight for injustice. Did you have a favorite era in this somewhat present time, the 40s, 50s, or 60s? Um, I, I definitely, I love the 40s. You know, I, there's, I, I'm, 
I love all of that kind of, you know, the costuming mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And the 60s as well. The 50s I could probably leave. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> it's, it just got a little funky uh -huh. then. But uh, yeah, and, and the 60s, you know, for me playing Claire, I loved that probably the most because I feel, you know, she came into her own really at that point and, and you know, unfortunately, Frank had to die for her to be free enough to then go and find Jamie, but it just felt that, you know, she's at the peak of her professional career. Brianna is raised and she can look at Brianna and think, wow, like, this is a, a remarkable young woman and I've done a great job. And then she also goes to sort of recoup or find that other part of herself again, which is, I guess, her her feminine mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. to to be loved and to be appreciated in that intimate way and um, you know it was nice to sort of see all of those parts come together. What was it like saying bye to Tobias? Oh, Although an outlander it's probably like yeah, never, never a sure know. thing. But. I've said goodbye to that guy so many times <laughs> I'm like we're done now it's just like see you later. I think I heard his last day he was like wearing pajamas right? It was, it was that scene? Yeah we had we actually shot um, the this one of the scenes from episode two where you know we we go to bed mm -hmm. and then the camera pulls back and you realize that they're in separate mm -hmm. beds um, and it just it ended up being one of those days you know it's it's kind of heightened emotions because you're aware that yeah. this is his last day but they also wanted to do a shot over me onto him reading the book um, so that you can't really tell whether or not we're in the same bed or not mm -hmm. before they do the shot where they come back so they'd and it was such a small set and. The camera was like right by me. So I had to say good night, turn around and then face plant down on the bed <laughs> so that they could get a clear shot. And it just sent me into the most terrible fit of giggles to the point where I was actually crying tears. Um, and the whole crew then just lost it. And, and we all just kind of, yeah, it was it was really funny. But then it was, you know, we, we, we got everyone together and we tricked him and he got called into the other set. and. Mm. He was very embarrassed because he was standing in his pajamas and everyone else was like, hey, goodbye. I want my last day to be in my pajamas wherever it's at. Um, yeah. but let's take some social media questions. Fan from Twitter asked, is it more challenge? Okay. Well, so before we get into this question, in this season, you shoot with a new scene partner, which is Scar the Snake. Yes. How was that? That was great. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, uh. I don't know. I'd never, I'd never handled a snake before. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. But uh, I always have this thing: if it's on set, he's going to be fine, right? Like if I'm walking right. through a jungle and I meet a snake, I'm not going to have yeah. the same feeling. But somebody's brought it into an office. It's bound to be a pet. It's probably been fed. We're probably good. You hope, but they make you sign that insurance form, so you never that's know. A good, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> I, I don't even think of that. But uh, yeah, so I met him in the office. Uh, and it was kind of cool. I was like, "Ooh, this is fun. But when we did the scene, like one of the first takes, because I have my skirt wrapped around me, it just went for the, you know, the, the nearest dark pocket and it just went there. And I was oh, like, no. um, not so comfortable with this anymore. Maybe we just take it out. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Well, the person on Twitter is asking, is it more challenging to shoot with animals or babies? Uh, animals, baby. Oh, the babies are so cute, and, and we've had so many babies uh, on on the last two seasons as well. And, you know, and we generally get twins, so if one cries, they yeah. sort of shove another one in. So that's fine. <laughs> the animals, uh, and we have a dog this season in, in yeah. season four. And let me tell you, it's there's a reason they say never work with <laughs> animals. Another fan asked. I mean, this sort of plays off the question I asked you earlier, but is there any part of the book that didn't make it into season three that you wish could have been included? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Claire's journey um, prior to going back that, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it would have been, it's more of her story and, mm -hmm. and they wanted to do both. And obviously she's my character. So, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of that stuff that I, that I loved. Um, but there's always stuff, and even later on, um, we changed quite a lot of the John Gray stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, in the books, I had loved when they met on the boat, and, and that then had, that changed a lot of what happened when they met in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very different. And, and yeah, 
There's a, we, we did change quite a few things that we were like, what, mm -hmm. why? I, I liked it in the book where Claire found out about Willie later, mm -hmm. um, personally, mm -hmm. but. Well, a big part for Claire in season three is deciding to leave her daughter. Uh, talk a little bit about your, how you perceive that decision of, you know. I think that was one of the hardest things to wrap my head around. Um, and yeah, how do you, it, it is a death. And, and you know, Tony Graffia wrote this great, like the great scenes around that where, you know, Claire does explain to Brianna, like it's not, this is not like you can just jump on and off an elevator. Like I may, I may, never, I may not even survive going through, yeah. let alone ever be able to come back. And so effectively you're, you know, it's, it's, it's like you're saying goodbye forever. Saying forever yeah. And that was a really hard thing to wrap my head around, but I, you know, I always try and find situations in real life where you can connect to. And I, you know, my dad's aunts, um, you know, in Ireland, I come from a country where there's a lot of immigration or there mm -hmm. has been a lot of immigration historically. And so three of my dad's aunts immigrated and they, you know, they never saw the rest of their families ever again. Um, one went to Canada and two went to, or two went to Canada, one went to India. And so I had to sort of go back and think, well, in the 60s, you're not that far from the 40s or the right. 30s when people would immigrate and that, that would be yeah. it. So, you know, we're so used to picking up a phone and being able to talk to people or FaceTime or whatever it is that, you know, you have to put back in the mentality of the 60s. It was probably not that uncommon for mm -hmm. for a child to leave and, you know, you may not see them again. You would still get letters, but... So in that way, I was like, okay, well, there's a precedent there that right. can sort of make it okay. But then it was, you know, the, obviously the main thing was Brianna giving permission or Brianna actually saying, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing. I think I'm, I'm not a mother, but I think anyone who is a mother or father, you know, to choose a love over your child, that's a, that's a, big ask yes. um, and and yeah it was tough well out of it not that this is the bright side but <laughs> out of it came the bat girl costume the bat suit the bat yes. suit sorry um, talk about <laughs> like that was like one of the best ensembles they had pockets and zippers which people yeah, Claire, didn't know what to make with all of Claire's costumes pretty much have pockets yeah. it's it's one of my stipulations <laughs> I love a pocket and I'm like she's from the 40s you know when she first went back she would she would want a pocket in there um, yeah you know that costume I think it was probably one of the most difficult ones for Terry to design because it had to do so, so much. much yeah um, and you know, we, we also, we got to the first day and we went out and filmed and it was freezing and it started raining and we didn't have the cloak at that point and mm -hmm. it didn't really protect and they were like, ah, we need to do something. And so right away overnight, they, they made that cloak. Um, and, you know, it, it, what I liked about it was that, I mean, <laughs> When we first looked at it, we were like, it's a little like a prison marm. <laughs> you know, are we sure this is what she wants to go back in? It's not exactly a first date outfit, you know. But it spoke to, I think there was a, there's a rigidity to Claire mm -hmm. that has, that, that existed because she was so kind of, mm -hmm. you know, reserved and she had lost so much of herself and she'd built all these protections around her heart and, there was there were walls up and that spoke to all of that and then as she goes back and meets Jamie it's almost like you can peel away layers like an onion and and we did that and I was very happy to say goodbye to some of them <laughs> but you know once we get on the ships and we head towards the new world and to to Jamaica you know you just see her settle into this world and it's like all of those barriers and protections that she had built up just they just ease away and, and it's nice that that's also replicated in the costume and um, and I love where we got to in the end you know it's mm -hmm. almost like um, Catherine Hepburn in yeah. African Queen yeah. it was just a great silhouette and great look and um, 
and, and, and Claire at that point is just very much, um, she's whole again. And, and I liked that you just see that in her. It just looks so effortless and free, so. How was it shooting on the ship? Um, it was really interesting. Obviously very different from mm -hmm. anything we'd done before. And then it gets very restrictive yeah. because even though these ships are, you know, they're not quite life size, but they're massive. And, um, you know, the, the, the sets in South Africa were amazing, but, you know, they're quite cramped when you're down below deck. Um, yeah. Well, it's also the ceilings are quite yeah. low and I, the poor, <laughs> we had uh, David Moore was our director for, for those two episodes. And just every five to 10 minutes you'd hear, ah, <laughs> and he'd have bashed his head off something else. And just, we had one of our cameramen from South Africa, this great guy, Lars. Um, Lars is about six foot four. Mm -hmm. And so he was constantly bashing his head off things. And, um, and then when you add in the gimbal, it's, it's yeah, definitely, it's you start to get a little seasick, seasick, but all of the scenes that we filmed and they were the sort of the first ones up were um, the typhoid epidemic. And we were doing all the stuff below deck. Mm -hmm. And they had used this mixture. Um, so it's, it's PAPS, I think is what it's called. It's like kind of like a porridge. Mm. And you, you can mix it with water or milk. Okay. And they chose to mix it with milk. And they made it on a Friday and we were shooting Ew. on Monday. That smelled. Oh, my, like there's a scene where myself and one of the other characters are coming down the steps and we walk into this space and Claire's like that. And it was, it was like hitting a wall of putrid, just, oh, it was, it was nasty. And, and it stayed on those costumes for about three or four days. I mean, those poor essays, the extras, that, that was, it was horrible. Well, it must've made being on a ship with all those men a little easier to bear. Cause you would think that would be smelly. But it was oh yeah, porridge. no, it it would mask any <laughs> man smell for a good week or two. It was yeah, it was intense. How about like the running through the jungle parts for you? You know, all of that stuff was it was really fun, but it was also we you know we're in South Africa, so uh, you know our greens department created this amazing jungle, but it wasn't that, that big. big. So some of it just we running did. in circles. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it was it was probably uh, you know it was probably I don't know like twenty five meters by ten meters mm -hmm. maybe. But you would actually get lost in it, like you know. So you would hear the crew somewhere, and you'd be like, "Where, where, where which way are we going?" And it's just you'd sort of pop out on one end, and you're like, "I don't know how to get way back to over there." But um, I liked all you know all of that stuff where Claire shipwrecked. It mm -hmm. was. You know, that's again, it's it's it, those are fun challenges and, you know, trying to map. Well, how does it feel to be two days into dehydration and what happens to you? And, you know, it's a lot of weird research where you're I was reading so many just accounts of people who'd been stranded in deserts or, you know, you hear of people who drive into right. the middle of nowhere and their car breaks down and they go on wandering and you just like, first of all, why would you leave the car? Um, <laughs> stay with your phone. Yes. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of reading about that and just about the disorientation and, and the, that the dehydration is, is the worst thing that happens. And, and you know, it was hot and all Was that. there a lot of downtime? I mean, this was like your first time shooting in South Africa, right? Like, did I you, had were zero you, downtime. No downtime. Mr. Hewan, <laughs> on the other hand, <coughs> This is where it all began. This is where it all yeah. starts. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was when he st when e when I'd be working and he would keep sending me pictures of like his great lunches that he's having, or <laughs> him on top of Table Mountain, or you know working out in the gym again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Damn him. I know. Let's ask him some more uh, fan questions. Diana from Twitter asks, if you could bring any actor onto Outlander, who would it be? Ooh. I mean, so many. Could we get Jenna Rollins in? Ooh, nice. I don't know what she'd do, but we're in America now. Yeah. Possible, right? Possible. Vanessa from Twitter asks, would you ever want to direct an episode? Um, I would love to direct. Um, I think the longer I'm on the show, I've, I, people have asked me this before, and I'm like, it's such a beast, it's, oh, yeah. our show. I don't think I would. But, you know, if we, if we go a few more seasons, I... The longer you're on it, the more you can kind of see, oh, I think I could, I think I could 
figure this out. And, you know, it, it's such an amazing crew. They would be, I would just rely on them, basically. Mm -hmm. I would just be like, do what you normally do. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think I would like to, actually. A fan from Twitter asked, and they asked this of Sam, too, if you could send the Frasers anywhere in the world for their honeymoon, where would it be? Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, let's go to Hawaii. I mean, we, we call Fraser's Ridge Fraser's Fridge <laughs> because it's in this forest and it's in a, a depression that um, <laughs> sort of stays about four or five degrees colder than anywhere else uh -huh. around us. So, yeah, the Fraser's of Fraser's Fridge. <laughs> he said an igloo, so. Uh, Gretchen from Twitter asked, which, which person from history would you like to see your character encounter in colonial America? Um, I'm kind of ignorant about colonial American history. Uh, who would she be? I don't know. People? Leave it up in there. <laughs> yeah. People. <laughs> um, season three we see after um, Jamie and Clara reunited, we see them sort of settle into married life, mm -hmm. which was different. How was that for you, exploring that side? It's really nice. You know, I think with any when you're on a show for a long time um you want you want to try out new things and mm -hmm. you know usually people want excitement right because usually yes. the norm is more <laughs> quiet and subdued but in in the respect to claire and jamie excitement is their norm mm -hmm. so it's actually nice to see them um be able to enjoy each other without all of these external forces kind of trying to pull them apart or um, and, and going into season four we see much more of that and, and it's and it's nice to explore well how do you how do they relate on a day-to-day -day, you know who takes out the garbage mm -hmm. like, no but it's but there's something the beautiful yeah yeah there's something beautiful in just watching them um, enjoy being with each other and mm -hmm. and that kind of domestic bliss I think that that's a really nice thing to to be able to explore you talked before about how Joan Didion's books like Blue Knight and A Year of Magical Thinking helped you in past were there any books that sort of helped you during this season um, well, again, like at the beginning of this season, there was so much about grief again, mm -hmm. and 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 um, I, I I definitely um, you know I, I I sort of went back to a year of magical thinking, but um, I'm trying to think what else I I was reading to help. I mean, the the stuff going to Jamaica and all of that, it's uh, it's so kind of crazy and out there. I mean, Diane, like I, I go back to. The, the book mm -hmm. um, to Voyager so much, but I can't, I, you know, I just can't, I can't even remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I know what I was, I know some of the books I was reading in South Africa had nothing to <laughs> do with the show, so, or they, they couldn't have helped me, but I can't think right now, sorry. Well, your character provided one of the rare moments of comedy on a show like this, which was talking to a coconut, which was <laughs> not in the book. Um, I thought you were going to talk about my drunk acting. That was comedic <laughs> enough. We could talk about that too, but uh, we can how, leave it. <laughs> did you get very method talking to oh this my coconut? God. I mean, some days you're like, you want me to do what? <laughs> uh, okay. I was definitely, I was channeling uh, Tom Hanks for sure. I was like, right, if, if Tom can do it, I yeah, can do exactly. it. Yeah, um, exactly. It was very funny. And actually, uh, uh, Father Fogden what a, like just an incredible character um, mm -hmm. and so wonderfully played and I'm terrible because I'm I'm, I'm spacing on, on the actor's name right now but you can look it up on IMDb uh -huh. <laughs> um, but he was fantastic and it was just such a funny wacky mm -hmm. part of the book and um, and and all of those scenes with, with Father Fogden and Mama Sita they were, they were really it, it was so out there but then also um, James he played mm -hmm. it with there was this undercurrent of such heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And so it was this beautiful sort of, you're, I think Claire feels so much for this man because she can understand mm -hmm. um, what it is to lose somebody and hear somebody who wasn't able to move past that. They, they sort of got lost in that loss. Um, but yeah, talking to a coconut, we'll just put <laughs> it up there on things I've done on Outlander. <laughs> well, it's also not lose sight of uh, Claire has killed a lot of people on this show. 
Don't know why everyone wants to bring that up. <laughs> like, um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> do you view her as this killer, or like, how do you? I mean, it is it is kind of a running joke. I'm like, you want like, I'm I, they're being added up as as we go along. And this is the other thing in the in the book, she doesn't kill the guy. Okay. Um, I think it's Willoughby who ends up killing him. Um, and I did, I did question, mm -hmm. I was like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. She's just got back. Do we want to make her an agent <laughs> of chaos already? Um, but she did it with good intention sometimes. Well, she was defending she was herself trying, yeah. and then, you know. She was trying to relieve the blood clot at one she, point. Look, she drilled she through tried, his yeah. skull and some days that works some and day, some days yes, it doesn't. Yes, so, exactly. you know, don't try it at home. But. <laughs> good disclaimer. Um, let's get to one more fan question and then we'll do the lightning round. So okay. prepare yourself for the lightning round. Deborah from Facebook asks, what were the best and worst parts of the costumes for season three and the upcoming season four? Uh, best cost best part about costumes of season three was all the amazing vintage stuff mm -hmm. I got to wear. Um, I remember going into Terry's office at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. and it was like being in the, in the most incredible vintage store. And she definitely owes me. <laughs> I was promised so many things were gonna fall <laughs> off the back of the truck and <laughs> land in my <laughs> possession. But uh, that hasn't happened yet. Um, <laughs> the worst thing was, as much as we all love the bat suit, it was the only costume I had for, for a while. about six months, seven months, and we all sort of wanted to burn it by the end of it. Um, and I was also promised I would get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but so far, there has not been a ritualistic burning. Interesting. So. How about the costumes for season four? What can you tell us? Um, I get new ones. <laughs> <laughs> so be rest assured, we're not still in the bat suit. Okay. Um, you know, we... We have a great uh, co-designer, Nina, and um, I've been working with Nina and uh, Terry's assistant, Basha, at the moment. Mm -hmm. And at, we're the Fraser's Ridge stuff, um, we have great stuff before that, but where we get to at the moment, I'm loving it so much. It's sort of a real, it's very, it really speaks to Claire's character, but it also, it's it's like Claire the Frontiers woman, mm -hmm. and I love it. It's just, it, the stuff looks great. and. You know when you've got a cool costume on, when the when the guys on the crew are like, "Hey, that, that's a cool outfit," and you're like, "Thanks, grip, thank you." Yeah. <laughs> like, Don't um, try any funny stuff. Yeah. Okay, lightning round, ready. Last show you binge watched? Wormwood. If you could go back and be on any TV show ever, what would it be? Roseanne. Nice. Uh, TV is often like a place where people go to unwind or relax from their hectic day. What do you do to unwind? Um, I, I, yeah, I hate to admit this, but I probably, my total guilty pleasure is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and I'm so sorry. Yes! Oh my God. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I love it. We're gonna talk about this after the camera stop. <laughs> okay. uh, what do you know now that you wish you knew on your first acting job? Everything. <laughs> what a mark is, uh, where the camera is. <laughs> no. yeah. have, have you ever been fired from an acting job? No. Good. There's time yet. <laughs> <laughs> Which Golden Girls character do you most identify with? Dorothy, Ooh. Rose, Blanche, Oh, no, Sophia? I know them all. Don't okay. worry. I'm, I'm well, I'm well. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love those. Um, I probably would like to think that I'm... I probably vacillate more between Dorothy and Rose, um, but I think I'd like to think that I'm uh, B. Or um, no, uh, I'm just saying I know the ball. Blanche. Blanche, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm Blanche, but I'm probably more the other two. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for joining us thank today, you. and thanks for, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to check out more of our uh, Emmy contender chats, head over to latimes.com. Thanks.